Hey guys, welcome, and to some of you, welcome back. Since the 2.0 candidate EFM version for the A4 was released to the public for testing, I wanted to go over some of the flight characteristics, uh, the handling, and the work done on it. This is not your old SFM A4 model. This one is getting close to the real deal. Although close, the work is not finished. Uh, more about this later. Really quick, trim to six, that's my preference for takeoff. Uh, flaps to one third. Let me take off and I'll talk more about it as I take you through a cycle of testing I'm doing with the A4 community team. Uh, currently I'm at 16,000 pounds. It's full power. Use no steering if needed under 60 knots. Above 60 knots, use the rudder. It's effective. The version I'm flying actually has an improved engine spool time over what was tested a few days ago. Uh, at 120, rotate. Keep the nose wheel off the ground and let the plane fly itself off the ground. Uh, don't pull too much here. Don't enter a stall and take off. Positive rate, gear up, above 170, flaps up. Takeoff is similar to the real A4 with only slightly less nose authority on takeoff than the actual A4. So as I mentioned in my Top Gun video, both Pulga and I are part of the A4 community test team. Since Pulga actually flew the A4s as a fighter pilot, he's also working with the developers to make this model the real deal. And it's getting close, guys. It's a nice morning scenery. So for the first test, I will do a roll. At about 280 knots, the A4 will do a full 360 degree roll in one second. Testing this A4, you can see it does just that. Both ways. And more than one roll. It's very accurate on this part. Second test I'm doing is the sustained turn at 5,000 feet at a speed of 330 knots. The main thing I'm trying to do is maintain the altitude and the speed to get the best test results. It doesn't have to be pretty, but it has to be accurate. After doing a few of these, on average I got about 12 to 12.5 degrees per second sustained turn. This is very close to the real A4E. So again, another accurate representation of the A4. It's very close. I know this stuff doesn't look like much, but we're establishing accuracy here. All the dogfighting and the good stuff will come later. The next test is the instantaneous turn. This is a max turn at around 300 knots that you use to get your opponent to overshoot if he's on your six. It can either be used as one turn, an S turn, like I'm doing here, or from this turn you can actually pull up and go into a barrel roll and then roll over using the rudder. The one thing I do want to mention is, uh, as you're looking at these turns, uh, right at the edge, as I come up to the edge, there's a lot of big shaking that's starting to occur. Remember this, we'll go over this in just a few minutes, it's very critical. Here I got around 18.5 to about 19 degrees per second of instantaneous turn. This is also very accurate. The next thing I'm doing is a barrel roll from the instantaneous turn. This is done to test the effectiveness of the roll done by using only the rudder, or mostly rudder. Okay, here we can see that at high angles of attack, the rudder is okay. It's, it's rolling the plane, but it does need a bit of help at times from the ailerons. This is also accurate. As that angle of attack increases, the rudder effectiveness and the aileron effectiveness decreases. At below critical angles of attack, the rudder does a full roll by itself. Over here, let's start a turn. Pull it into a barrel roll. No problem for the rudder. Although here, I did pull the nose a little bit higher than last time, but the angle of attack itself was lower. Okay, now this next part is not necessarily the test but I do want to show you how much different the EFM model is from the current SFM. Okay, I admit I'm a bit fascinated with the Hoover Dam in DCS. Reminds me of Transformers. Um, let me get back to the test. Basically, the real A4 will give you a big shake when the critical angle of attack is reached. And at this point, all of the aileron and most of the rudder authority is lost. The A4 will flip on you really quick, unless you're very coordinated, and it will put you into the ground. Speed doesn't matter, this is all about angle of attack. The recovery is really easy, but has to be quick. The longer you wait, 
the harder it is to recover. Okay, so here we go. Pull, 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 pull. Here's the rollover, nose down, negative G's immediately to get control back and then slowly recover. That nose down is essential. If you don't do it immediately, you may not have enough time to recover. So it's essential that nose goes down fast. Yeah, I know, getting distracted again by Hoover Dam. Been there, scary as heck actually. So here, here I'll do another one. Uh, pull, pull, pull. Okay, nose down, recover. It, it's harder than it looks because with the nose pointed down as you're flipping over, you're actually pointing to the ground even more. But it's essential, it's essential to recover. Once that stall is broken, you can do an easy recovery. If you don't break that stall, you'll be in a lot of trouble. This performance is also accurate. So now let me show you what happens if you hesitate to recover. I'm gonna to try to be cool about this. Let me pick a space to do it to do this late recovery. Maybe I can pull this one off. If I do, it'll be so cool. Okay, pull, pull. There's the roll, I'm still pulling. Nose gets worse. Okay, try to recover late. Okay, pulling up, pulling up, uh. Just made it past the edge, okay. If it wasn't for the edge, I would've hit the ground. So remember the recovery process and don't hesitate, don't hesitate. Uh, next, I'm going to do a sustained turn at 10,000 feet. This is the same as 5,000 feet. Our main goal here is to stay level and keep the airspeed at 370 knots in this case. And after doing a few of these, the average turn rate was from 11 to 11.5 degrees per second. This is fairly accurate as well. After the sustained turn, I'm doing an instantaneous turn to 10,000 feet. Same thing as before, and uh, looking at the attack view later, here I got an average between 17.5 to 18 degrees per second. Again, that's within the accurate range. Next, I did do this during the flight, but it was so weird because it's a slow motion maneuver and it's weird if you do it by yourself. Uh, it's better if you do it against another plane just to show it. Here I am flying against another A4. This one is flown by Pulga and we are in what we call horizontal scissors. Uh, we're both at around 170 knots, plus or minus few knots, and we're both trying to outturn each other in what's essentially a one circle fight. Looking at the numbers, the A4 here gets anywhere from seven to nine degrees per second, which even though it doesn't look like much on the screen, it is enough to outturn most of the planes in this uh, low and slow position. This is where the A4 stand its ground against its contemporaries, and this is why it was used in Top Gun. And it's very important to show you this part, it's important to test this part because this is what, what, what you need it for. The last thing I do as a part of the test is to actually find the minimum controllable airspeed. This is the airspeed where all my control surfaces have authority and I control the altitude. That speed is about 110 knots on this plane. The real A4, it's about 100 knots. So it's pretty close on this one, but it is off by 10 knots. Which you can live with, especially since I'm not showing it here, but I have brought this A4 down to 80 knots with still some control during the dogfight with full gun. Although many pilots have not tried this in real life for safety reasons, and Pulka included, he never did this in real life, Top Gun instructors did bring the A4 down to 80 knots at times, and they reported that it still had some control, same as, same as it does here, so that is actually very accurate. Lastly is the landing. Okay, so for landings, I'll give you the process on how to do it. Uh, you can start off at 150 knots, and once you are on final, you fly that donut. That's just the left of the hood. Uh, there are three lights. You want the yellow donut in the middle. So adjust the pitch and speed accordingly to get that donut while you stay on the glide slope. Now, this takes time and practice, which I obviously need, which is true. I have not landed this plane often, maybe a total of three or four times, since I'm actually more focused on flight testing. 
but with time and practice, this should become automatic, uh, something you do in the plane without thinking. Okay, at least I got an understand line. But the uh, A4 is a tough cookie. It, it is designed to land on ships, you know. And lastly, the brakes and these brakes. Oh boy, uh, the brakes are terrible on the A4. Uh, just because if you look at the wheels, they actually look like bigger bicycle wheels. And you know those won't stop a 120 knot seven ton plane fast. It is going to take some time, and that is actually very accurate. So that was it, guys. This is a very different plane than that SFM model that's out there right now. This is a great model, and it will be even greater when the full EFM version comes out. The developers, they're putting a lot of time into this, and the plane is continuing to improve. It's getting very close now. As far as flight model, it does take some flight skills to fly, especially in combat. If you already fly the A4, be ready for a big change. I would suggest everyone get this model. It's a small, versatile plane with more armament options than most others, and the best part, it's free. Anyway, guys. Thanks for watching, thanks for sticking with me, take care, and I'll see you guys soon.